for anyone who haven't watched Kuroko no Basket. Spoiler alert! Hi, we are Intermezzo. Intermezzo. I'm Luca. And I'm Hannah. So today we've decided to do a series on anime, which focus on characters from an antagonist team from a sports anime. Although there is not really an antagonist in sports anime usually. So there are different types of sports anime, which may include any kind of sport. There are common sports such as basketball, volleyball, football, swimming, and the more uncommon ones in anime, which may include something like ice skating, ballroom dancing, kyodo, which is archery, and stride, which is in a sense parkour. So we've decided to do our first episode on Kuroko no Basuke, which focuses on basketball. And I believe that the character you chose is... Dudun is Kasamazu Yukio. So, Kasamazu Yukio is a point guard from Kaijo High. He's the captain and he's a third year student. He has black hair and he's 178 cm and he has he usually wears a pair of knee high socks. So, I remember that Kaijo has a blue uniform and that captain, he's usually the one who calls. He makes calls in competitions. And of course, as point guard, it's normal that he does take responsibility in making his team do stuff. But what's special about him? Despite the Kiseki no Sedai, he's one of the greatest point guards that you can see on the monthly basketball magazine, which um, he is um, famous for his outstanding physical abilities and especially his high speed turns around and fairly precise three points. Itsuki from Salin has commented Kasamatsu as the fastest player he's ever encountered, beside Kiseki no Sedai. And I also remember Takao from another team, who is also a point guard. He also holds a high respect for Kasamatsu when they met. And he also took Kasamatsu aside for a chat, as they're both point guards. And I find that interesting because as someone who's not a Kiseki no Sedai, nor is he the uncrowned kings, but he also has like such a made such a name for himself as a point guard. Yeah, so one thing I found he makes the whole game interesting is that his psychological support for the team is like tremendous, especially f- um, his support to Kise. Kise was um, taken into Kaijo as a first year, and he is really good at anything, like basically anything, and because he has the ability to mimic everything. But then Kasumanzu doesn't take that like very seriously because. He believed that like everything, you should take everything very seriously, and therefore he tried to guide Kise into the right path by doing the reward and punishment system. He puts in a lot of effort to train Kise, in mm-hmm. my point of view, mm-hmm. and um, one of the thing is his famous flying kick <laughs> in the anime. <laughs> he does put in some punishment, but then he doesn't hesitate to compliment Kise. Mm-hmm. I also find that the relationship between them two is very interesting as um, I think he does try his utmost best to uplift the team, like Kisei along. And there are a lot of instances in the anime when you see him trying to guide his team to see things in a more positive light. Um, I remember that when they lost to Seirin at the start of the anime, although it was a practice match, they lost. And um, I remember that he was advising Kise to learn the word revenge and to win in future games against Seirin. And that was one of the first impressions I had of him as a captain, aside from the flying kick. (laughs) And yeah, that really built his character up. I was really sort of touched when I I watched the game of Kaijo and Toro. He did all he can to just to support Kise because he really believes the potential in Kise mm-hmm. and he thinks that Kise is the key to win the match. Um, Kise was hurt during the match and then he immediately give support to him and mm-hmm. just say, okay, you take whatever time you need and but then I believe that you will come back for mm-hmm. us. I think Kasamatsu always tried to teach Kise the importance of team play because I think the play style is quite different from when Kise was playing at Taiko. Mm-hmm. Because at that time, like most of the players in the team, they could have just gone solo. But Kasamatsu isn't one of those players, mm-hmm. and he really stressed about team playing. So that was really touching. And then 
he's a really responsible captain as well. Yeah. Like he he sort of like take the whole responsibility of losing the game to to up on oh. his shoulders. And then it was really sad that he was he was crying in the locker room by himself. Yeah. After the match. I think the sad bit is he tried to be okay in front of his team, and then he went alone, and then he just broke by himself. And that really hurts to see him do that. I remember that there was a history of Kazamatsu because he made a wrong call in a previous match that they also lost in a previous championship, I think. He somehow suffered because of it and he thought himself unworthy. But And then the coach made him captain and he sort of took it upon himself to ensure that the team will win. And that's also a plus point for Kazamatsu as a character. Yeah, so that game playing against Toho mm -hmm. is very significant in his well high school basketball life because he was playing in that game as a third year student and it was sort of like his last inter-school championship that he could play before going to university so based on that losing experience from before like um, the coach made him captain and then so mm -hmm. he really wanted the team to win this game well very unfortunately that Toll still wins he was still trying to cheer the team up mm -hmm. and he just told them to go back with pride as there's no shame to return from losing that match since they're already top eight in the nationals. Yeah, I also remember in the same game with To'o that um, he was playing against the other point guard, Imayoshi, and he still held his own, even though Imayoshi was famous for being like the brain of the To'o team. And yeah, in a sense, I thought I think he fought, he fought well. He fought valiantly and there was no shame in going down, really. Yeah, there was no shame in going down. As we've said before, like he is a really good player mm -hmm. himself. So I think that's why like people from Kaijo they really respect him, and then so they take his commands in the game very seriously, and they did try to do their best. I mean, from the first game they played against Seirin in the practice match mm -hmm. to until like now they're playing against Toho, you can really see the growth of the team yes. and it's become something really different and it gave me goosebumps actually. <laughs> well, I do believe that Kaijo is one of the teams that we see more in um, Kuroko no Basuke and of course Kise's growth arc is something that anime might have highlighted also because um, we see him starting off playing against Kuroko as the first game against Seirin and then we also see him like throughout the arc so maybe we've seen his growth the most and that's what made us invested because Kasamatsu was one of the main reasons for that growth. So all in all, Kasamatsu despite being a relatively small player and he really has the guts and calmness to face taller and larger opponents and He's a really team player too. He always looks after his team, especially Kise, as he wanted to guide him to the right path of being a team player. Mm. Well, we can also see him off court as um, he's not exactly good with girls. And we see a lot of his um, funny moments with his team, especially when he interacts with other team members. They're talking about girls and all that. And that is a sort of comedic relief. That's quite fun also. So this is Kasamatsu Yukio. Uh, and we look forward to doing another episode on and so-called antagonists of sports anime. And the next episode we have prepared is one of the Kiseki no Seidai which is Midorima Shintaro. So tune in to our next episode. This is Intermezzo. Bye! Bye.